start the presentation here just talking about some of our cattle handling facilities and just this one's not going to be anything related to barns. We're going to cover that uh, next month, I think the first Wednesday of the month at 11 o'clock. So we'll go ahead and just uh, get started here with the presentation. Oh, let's see, how do you go into... Oh, I forgot. All right. So we're kind of showing our vision for uh, what Morgan and I have for precision animal management. We have uh, some of our, our pillars to help uh, farmers remain economically viable. Uh, so one of it's going to be farmstead planning where we're using multiple tools, whether it's GIS or other, we're making data-driven decisions or so using scales, electronic ear tags to try to help farmers make decisions on their farm that can help uh, simplify, but also streamline this data collection to help them make more informed decisions. Looking at as far as environmental controls, we have a lot more producers, I think, within the state looking to put in um, confined, confined barns for their cow-calf operations. And so then we have to also look at uh, potentially some of the dairy strategies or strategies that are used within the dairy industry for these beef operations. And then additionally, trying to integrate some of the newer technologies, uh, looking at, we're talking about drones, a lot of uh, sensors that are available to help us monitor these animals. They also have, you know, saw uh, Cargill the other day announced that they're having invested in a 3D scanner for facial recognition for cow, for cattle as well. And then coming back around to safety, being one of the main, one of the big pillars that you know, nothing can happen unless it's safe. Um, so, you know, talking about cattle handling facilities from a functionality standpoint, you know, looking at, I know you guys are agents, you've dealt with farmers before, you know, why are we doing this? It's for, you know, primarily cattle health reasons, looking at preventative, preventive methods for deworming and vaccinations, also looking at remedial treatment. So we're giving antibiotics at this point as well. And so from a production standpoint, looking at pregnancy testing, implanting, castrating, dehorning, um, and then potentially marketing, so certified precondition for health sales, the CPH 45 sales, uh, you can't, you know, get them worked without having a working facility. And so this is a, a five to $10,000 investment for a lot of producers. And we have to see that we really get a good return on investment uh, for these producers. And, you know, we want to make sure that they get the most bang for their buck when they're designing and planning to put in a facility. Um, so cattle handling facility designs, design considerations. So safety. Safety is the most important, not only of the individual themselves, but also of the cattle. So cattle is a secondary safety goal as well, because you don't want to hurt your, your asset there. And so thinking about it from an economic standpoint, you know, do we need, there's a, we have to really evaluate what are the wants versus the needs of these producers. And so it'd be nice to have a double alley system for run, working with cattle, but a lot of producers within the state, they're running 50 head. You don't necessarily need a deluxe Cadillac model to run your cattle. You know, you might need something a lot more simple, a lot more economic. Uh, to that same end, I don't want to oversimplify, which is why we have, we have those numbers there sh shown to the right, that whole big table. We have those numbers for a square foot per animal. Um, and so we really try to just utilize those as a baseline for our design criteria saying, you know, you need at least 20 square foot per cow and a holding pen. And so that's something we, we, we have these minimum specifications for height. We don't want cattle to jump over the gates. And as you get closer and closer to your working shoot, working and through your working facility, you want your facility to become more resilient uh, to a certain degree. Uh, when I, I'll mention orientation just north and south, um, this is just if we're running cattle into and out of a barn. We want to run them uh, ideally, but you know, we can't change the direction of our barn into the north end or south end of the barn. Uh, if we're trying to run them in the east or west end, there exists the possibility of whenever we're working on them, we're going to be running directly into the sun, potentially. And so this is especially for the east, we're running into the east and west orientation. And so that's just something that can be a design consideration. If we're building a facility within a barn, that's something just take into account. Uh, lighting is another issue um, for cattle, and there's a minimum specification for lighting within barns. You know, when you're working these animals, and we have those numbers as well. Uh, something to think about is we always see like, scary movies, don't go in there. You know, that, the cow has that same mindset. 
And unless you can see that it's going to be a safe environment for them to enter, enter into, they're going to, to balk or reduce the flow going to these facilities. So, so lighting can be an important issue. And then also, you know, a design consideration, having, having a roof over top of your head, especially in the summer, or, and even in the winter months, if you're working these animals for synchronization or vaccinations, whatever it may be, having a roof over your head can be a, a beneficial factor. So kind of giving you some just general information, what you already know and how we have that table there. Uh, so we look into just our basic cattle handing facility components. We have our holding pens and gates. So holding pens, I think is something that uh, a lot of producers don't have, but would really want or potentially would want to have. And so a way to help you sort these animals uh, when you bring them in from your access alley, you know, get them to holding pens, sort off a couple of the cows and calves. This is something I think that a lot of producers are needing on in the, within their operation or facilities. Um, so we have an access or sorting alley when you're bringing these animals up from a, your larger field or pen. Uh, you really want this to be about 10 foot wide because or 10 foot, 12 foot wide, maybe not much wider than that because it's what all you can defend. So when you're moving cattle, you know, you, you try to move them as a group or a couple animals or as a group through this access alley. And it makes it easier if you can push them uniformly through this access alley. So having it be about 10, 12 foot wide would be ideal. And we'll go over some more of these as we go through the presentation. Um, getting to our crowning pen or tub, you know, we're going to have about 12 square foot per animal. And then this leads into our, our working chute slash alley and takes them on down the squeeze chute. So those are just our basic components. And some of these farms can also have a, as additional options as a scale, which can be essential because we buy and sell and these animals on a weight basis, so we really need to know what they weigh, and a loading chute. Those can also be helpful options for a lot of these producers. Uh, so going into the head gate, we'll just go over some just basics that you all probably know real quick though. Uh, we want this, this is the head gate is the most important uh, facility feature, most important, because it needs to be safe, sturdy, quiet, and easy. This is the minimum requirement you need for working your animals, have some way to hold them, hold them still. Uh, this can be manual, self-catch, or hydraulic. Um, and there's, there's a couple different options with the self-catch and I'm gonna go over those here in a second. And so the, there's also you know, ones that fully open as well. And so it allows you to do more mixed sizes of animals. So when I say self-catch, it's gonna be the self-catch is shown here. Um, it's typical, the red, the red tartar gate, the red tartar head gate here. And so one of the things that happens is, you know, it works well for cattle that are easily excitable. So if you have some stalker calves or uh, calves, you know, you're just, you're just backgrounding them and they're easily excitable. You, they can run in, into the system and get easily caught. However, you know, have that red bar or have a circle around that red bar. On many an operation, I've seen that red bar bent of where producers have tried to, they, the animal comes up, it doesn't quite slam it all the way shut. And so they're pushing as hard as they can on that red bar. And I've seen it, it bent many a times. So, you know, from a personal, personal standpoint, I, I prefer the, the blue system on the right, uh, just so we're one that, I'm not saying prefer per se, but one that fully opens and closes is a better option because you work in your mixed cattle groups a little easier. It also has, you know, this has a self-catch option, which you can use the spring system to actually clamp down on the calves uh, and helps you hold those animals as well. But I think the fully opening option uh, works a lot better when you have the mixed groups of cattle. And, you know, I think one of the issues as well is, you know, how many times have you talked to producers or are they going to work their, if they have a bunch of wild and crazy calves, are they really going to work them? P probably not. And so if we have the red tart on the left, they're probably going to be somewhat tame. And so they might not go and hit the shoot at, with the speed that they need to. And so that's, that's where I run into issues. There's probably, you're not working the craziest, craziest, craziest that are going to tear on your facility. Uh, you're probably working ones that are somewhat tame. And so that's why I think uh, for a lot of farms in Kentucky, you know, one that fully opens and closes, if they have cow calves, would be an ideal solution uh, from a personal standpoint. Um, so we get into our squeeze. Our squeeze system is, um, you know, it's, it's something that is nice to have. We have this. Uh, yep. Oh. Okay, so we have, we have our squeeze and we have like this V type of squeeze. And so what you run into with this V type of squeeze is if it's fixed at the bottom, you know, cattle can still potentially drop down. 
I mean, there are other options where both sides move or that if the bottom isn't fixed and it also squeezes in as well. Uh, what we're trying to do with this is just decrease that cattle stress and also keep them vertical, keep them upright. So it makes it easier for to get the vaccinations or whatever other drugs to these animals. Um, so a palpation cage, you know, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of palpation cages. So especially essential, essential whenever you're doing pregnancy testing, AI of animals, semen testing, and you know, they help you have unwanted help when you're actually trying to evaluate some of these animals. Um, if, if we're doing putting in cedars, so a lot of producers have gone to you know, the synchronization system. So we're putting in cedars, we're AI in these cattle. This makes it a lot easier to work with these animals and you avoid having that unwanted help um, for these animals or when you're working these animals. All right, so the tub system. Um, for the tub, you, know, you don't necessarily have to have a tub. Uh, we can design it where you can squeeze the animals within a, you know, essentially a tiny portion where you run them down the chute and you can squeeze these animals into, uh, there's different ways to go about it, but a tub is probably the most common system. So if we're looking at a, a 10 foot tub, 180 degree, 180 degree tub, according to the 12 square foot per animal, you only want to put three to four, three to maybe four cows in that tub at a time. And so what I see a lot of times is producers will try to put, you know, five animals. They'll try to really squeeze these animals in. It doesn't quite work as effectively if you use a couple of smaller groups then shut them up. Like once you run them through the tub, shut them out, then, then load your next group and progressively work these animals. So I think that could be a little more uh, effective ways of working them than trying to shove a whole bunch in there. But I see this being a problem for a couple of producers as well. They don't have to do them all at once because they will get worked at some point throughout the day. Um, so just talking a little bit about our corral, shoot, or alley. Uh, what this can have for us is we want this to be, again, specifications, depending on if you're working cows or calves. If it has adjustable sides, that's great, but that also requires additional investment investments by the producer. Um, so I always say, you know, just make it for your biggest animal. So 28 inches is typically recommended for your cow calves. Uh, could go up to 30 if they're going to be uh, rather roly-poly kind of cows. And you know, we want this to be at least 20 foot long as well. So you can queue up a number of animals uh, while you're working them. So you can queue up two or three animals in the chute and get loaded your next group into your tub. So get you a little more better, a little better flow throughout. Another option is, so this is not essential, but it is nice and does help with the flow of animals and you would have to have um, less length of alley, is this double alley. It all, this one shown here has adjustable sides. There's also a wooden, wooden design that we came up with that would work as well for producers. But it's a way in which animals, they move side by side and they just, it takes advantage of that natural, uh, they see that instead of having a 30 inch hole for them to go through, 30 or 28 inch hole, they now have a 50 or 60 inch hole where they can see this big gap and they go through as, together as animals. And so it takes uh, advantage of some of that gregarious nature of the cattle. And they actually flow a lot better through this type of double alley. But I want to say, nonetheless, if they're working 50 animals, this type of double alley isn't necessarily essential. It's an additional investment. It would be nice. It's more of a want as opposed to a need. Um, when we look at portable options. We got producers on, you know, running multiple farms, different locations. This can be an ideal option. Uh, for that, all they really have to do is build a couple of holding pins. So instead of, you know, creating the whole facility, they just need a couple of holding pins then an access alley to run them uh, to the tub system for their portable, portable sheep system. Uh, looking, at, looking at board fencing. So uh, this, is, this is another area where there can be some issues for farmers. It needs to be at least 50% of their height needs to, need to, be, need to be boards. So 50% of that total height needs to be boards. So just uh, have it shown here. This is according to the Midwest Plan Service. Uh, Having, you know, within your working facility, a six foot tall fence, you're gonna need at least five two by eight boards. So just something to keep in mind for producers who are doing it themselves, you know, that needs to have that resilience and strength. Uh, we look at some, some couple of backstops for your alley. You know, this is some by the Midwest Plan Service. We have a one inch square tubing as one option. Uh, another one is they have just a simple chain to help prevent animals from backing up as easily. Get Once again, trying to get a better flow for these animals within the shoot system. Uh, here are a couple different options. I got um, 
from one of the bottom here is from Midwest Plant Service, a couple other ones I have, and one's kind of being blocked by another picture. Um, it's just showing the different options there are for backstops. So you don't necessarily have to have the square inch tubing. There's other options um, which are available, or you can make yourself through the Midwest Plant Service uh, for, for helping improve the flow of your cattle. Uh, I'm gonna talk, you know, just brief, very briefly about scale systems, because uh, it, is, it is an option. Uh, there's two different types. There's electronic, digital, and mechanical beam scale. I personally am going to recommend the electronic and digital because you can integrate it with your electronic ID tags. It, it integrates with uh, computers a lot. As far as data acquisition, a lot. We can streamline a lot of those processes. Uh, if we're looking at the size and capability, there's you know ones for much larger producers where you can weigh, weigh your group of animals if you're performing that type of management strategy, and ones for a single animal. Single animal capacity is probably what most of our producers would be looking at. And you know, we're also thinking about the location. This is this something which we're gonna be trying to move between two farms? It's gonna be fixed versus portable. And this is something we're gonna put in our chute versus our alley. And so we have, we're working on getting the final publication out, but you know, there is a way for, you know, we look at, you know, we can get you a $300 set of load cells, um, and, you know, we, we have a system where farmers can build themselves a, a scale system for about $700. But if I've gone to your county and talked at all, I've mentioned or talked about or brought a demo of scale to show that it's, there's not that much to a scale system if you build it yourself. It's just C-channel, set of load cells and display, and some boards. So it literally costs about $700 in materials. Um, and we're looking at a loadout shoot, you know, just one of, one of the things I want to mention for this is that you know, really need it to be the maximum rise, maybe four inches per foot. So kind of like, kind of similar to a roof, that's the maximum. You don't want your cattle essentially climbing up into the semi-trailer. You want to make it an easiest transition as possible. So, you know, they, they say three and a half inches, so maximum three and a half to four inches per foot of length is what you're going for that rise. Um, here's another example of it. And so another, another option, so you mentioned the boards before, but another option is guardrails. And I just want to mention that because we have a, a couple producers who are putting in guardrail because it's something they, they, they want. And they also have this philosophy that, you know, this is the last facility they're ever going to build. And they're going to have that Calipari philosophy of one and done. This is the last one they ever want to build. So something to think about uh, with these is just the edges can be an issue, the sharp edges. So there is a product, I think it's called Trim Guard, or so there's products available in which you can cover the end of those guardrails to help protect the cattle as they're being worked through facilities with guardrails to maybe limit or minimize some of the potential for getting cut. Um, another option is to use pipe. You know, I've talked to, we had one producer who put in a facility and used pipe. Um, at some point when we have this type of option, one of the things to think about is if I'm running feeder calves or something where they're easily excitable, this might make sense. If I have a cow-calf operation and I'm having to, to go this route to work my cows, maybe I need to think there might be an issue with the disposition of the cattle because you don't need to build a Fort Knox necessarily to work your animals. So it might be an issue with the, uh, the disposition of the animals as opposed to the facility itself. All right, this, this just shows where you can also, if you wanted to, you know, we have the boards, but they filled in the gaps with two by fours. As far as having a solid side versus open sided for facilities here in Kentucky, it makes sense for out west to have solid sided for these animals when you're running a whole bunch of animals. Uh, and, you, and then the time per animal really becomes a critical factor when you're working two, 300 animals. But here in Kentucky, I don't think it's as much of an issue as they make it out to be. I think you can have open sided. Uh, it allows the animals to see a little bit of their surroundings, but they should still flow through the facility. And I think it really depends on someone on the situation, but I think for a lot of producers, you know, having open-sided would work and solid-sided is not necessarily essential. I think, Morgan, do you agree? I agree. Um, so we're looking at a couple simple working facility designs. This is probably the simplest for, you know, just a small herd. It's not, again, this is not a cookie cutter. It's not gonna work for everybody. But it's just a simple design that could work for a lot of different producers within the state. We just have a trap area, run into these holding pens, crowd them through a tub, then run them on down your chute, into your chute. Uh, this is it's shown in, in a 3D, 3D format. 
something I do want to mention though is uh, I haven't really mentioned when I've gone to a lot of these cow cattle meetings is just the gate selection. How do cows get out? You know, they usually try to go through the gate or some other weak point that they've determined. Uh, if you look at how cows get out, they're usually trying to go over or under. If I was building gates, I'd probably make that top and bottom bar, bar as strong as possible because they don't usually try to go through a gate. But, uh, you know, when we talk about our gates, you, you see them here and you see them advertised. This is an economy gate, a standard gate, a bull gate. What, what, all, what all does that really mean? I mean, what, when we talk about those gates, it's like, yeah, a bull gate should be stronger than an economy gate or standard gate, but do we, doesn't necessarily mean that it's stronger. Because I can just put any type of name on there and say it's a bull gate, like it holds in bulls. Um, so we get to what's really important, in my opinion, is just, it, and it partially depends on the cattle and the disposition of the cattle, but it's the gauge of the gate. So most of the time when you get a gate, it's gonna be 16 gauge, and it'll change the, uh, the thickness of the hinges, so it might be three quarter if you want a heavy duty, or heavier, quote unquote, heavier duty gate. But if you're in, in your working facility, um, you know, or put, having it for your push tub, you really want something that's 14 gauge. You really want something that's gonna be resilient enough to handle uh, the pressures in which the cattle are gonna put on it. Because, um, you know, it, you know they, make, they do make 19 gauge gates. And I, I always make fun of them. I was like, that's a good visual barrier. And I don't really know why they make it because it's, it's, you know, almost half as thick as your 14 gauge. And I call it the, your 19 gauge is, uh, in my opinion, a cow Kleenex. They blow on it, it crumbles up and crinkles up, and they throw it away, essentially. So 19 gates, in my opinion, are, are useless. You really need something that's going to be 16 or 14. As you get closer and closer to your chute, you want to switch over to 14 gauge gates as you're pushing those animals or potentially seeing more forces being applied to it. Um, you know, and it, it really depends on the disposition of your animals as well. 14 gauge will be more resilient. And this here is one where they use A53 pipe. This is at the Washington County Stockyards. You know, having, you know, they're seeing a lot of different types of animals that are of various dispositions. This makes a lot of sense for them. You should not need something like this on the farm. However, I do also want to mention that when we are in that facility, you know, just something to think about is just making sure that the cattle can't, um, you flip a hinge. At some point or somewhere as you're working this, you flip the hinge so the cattle can't push under the gate or pop the gate off the hinges and then escape. So just something most farmers do anyway, but just try to make sure to remind them, flip a hinge, because it, you know, if they don't do it, they'll be reminded quickly. And then thinking about, you know, our dimensions, when we're doing some more design, you know, it's a 12 foot nominal dimensions. So we have two to four inches for our, they're usually about two to four inches shorter than that actual 12 foot, you know, allow space for connections and hinges. And you'd want to plan for having additional space if you want to have a, a slam latch or other items. Um, so when we get into what we can do as far as design, you know, here's, here's a simple, simple 2D design. And I don't, I'm not really a fan of, uh, Simple 2D designs, I like more detail, a little more detailed drawings. Um, so this one shows two pins that are 12 foot wide and 20 foot long. I think in the next slide I actually changed the dimension to 24 foot long. But when we look at this, we think, what's the problem? It's got two pins, we just throw up two 12 foot gates and we're good to go. Not necessarily. When we go to the more of a 3D design, we see kind of what the issue is. So we have that same 12 foot spacing and um, center to center of posts, but we look, we add our, our six inch, approximately six inch post. We've added our two, two by eights as far as our, our boarding on the side. And we see that up oh, now that dimension from board to board, that dimension has now changed to 11.25 feet. So we couldn't swing a gate fully through if we wanted to. And so that's where we really have to think about and analyze beforehand, you know, how much space do you want to give? Do you want the gate to be able to swing 180 degrees, just 90 degrees? If we do our hinges correctly, we have them potentially swinging 270 degrees. So, um, you know, really when we're doing these designs, we have to think, you know, what is the ideal space? What's our gate length? And we'd have to leave additional space. We wanted to even put in a slam latch or other options for this type of facility. So that we try to um, create more detailed drawings for the producers so they're not just getting out there then encountering uh, the problems like, well, well, where do I get an 11 foot gate now? And we do have, um, you know, a lot of times when we have producers where we do these designs, you know, we do have information for them if they want to find, you know, where are gate companies? You know, there's a lot down in um, Casey County that are, are right together. And so it might be an option for them. Uh, when, we, when we assume gates, we always assume uh, $10 per foot. 
just just a simple calculation. So it's a 12 foot gate. We assume it's going to cost them at least $120. You can get it for cheaper from some of those um, from Casey County potentially or from other uh, locations throughout the state. So we have some of that information for our producers if they need it. Uh, we say if they're buying, you know, 12 or 13 gates, it might make a lot of sense for them to make a trip um, or have it, some gates delivered to their farm or get some type of some type of discount when they're purchasing a lot of gates. Um, so we talk about when we do a farm visit. So we go to a farm visit. This is one we did um, back in 2016. But this is um, a farmer. Had, he had a on his site. He had a, an area where he had two small lots and then his actual working facility. So we added the gate in the middle there. We, we told him he probably needed to add another gate in his facility there because he's having problems getting his animals to work through the facility. Uh, what he had was he had a two by four or well a piece of plywood in the back to try to help funnel the animals in the, into the facility into the actual alley and then he also had you know this eight foot gate and we went with them worked with them a little bit and tried to redesign eliminate that dead corner in facility his, in his facility said you need at least at least three or four posts uh, gave him a couple different options for the for that and showed him you know this is how your gate would swing you'd have a little bit of space initially but you should be able to push it, push it close and really uh, work your animals a little easier. We also added um, potentially on that side as well some, you know, he had it completely solid walled and a lot of his cows were just balking. So we added a little bit of, uh, took out a couple boards actually, or suggest that he take out a couple boards so that one person can push the animals into the alley, but also push them down the alley as an option. And you know, one of the nice things we're doing a lot of this stuff in CAD, we can you know make the gate swing, we can do a lot of stuff where you don't actually have to build it, but we test it out and show that, yeah, these gates shouldn't hit, or um, if there's any obstructions, we can kind of account for that and plan for that in the future. Uh, so one of the other things we also saw at this facility uh, was he was having a lot of labor issues. It's, and I think we'll see that across the state. It's, it's hard to get good people to help you work cattle. And so, I think when you have that limited labor availability, you know, one of the things that can help you, you know, something as simple as having a slam latch, a way for your gate to automatically lock in position um, as you're pushing the animals through a facility can make a huge difference when you're actually trying to push them through a facility. So having slam latches, whether it be a two-way slam latch, one-way slam latch, whatever it may be, um, I'm, a, I'm a big proponent of using these uh, within a working facility. Um, and so then we also, uh, this producer wanted to have a uh, multiple holding pins. So, you know, like we said, they're, they're going to be at least 10 foot wide for these, or approximately 10 foot wide, so we can easily push and move animals as needed. And so we looked at, you know, different swing in the gate where they're going to be coming from uh, the far end and moving uh, close. So we're coming from this far end here and moving down the facility here. So I kind of show here, we told him you could potentially open as many gates as you wanted to and then run the animals in for this facility. And then once you push the animals in, you can then shut some of your gates and then sort off whichever your cows and calves or bulls, however you need to sort it, you can then progressively work and sort these animals or hold some back on that first pin. But it gives, it gives them options. And that's really what he wanted was just to have options for recapturing animals potentially and options for sorting his animals. And so we went ahead and you know drew him up. You know, made sure he had definitely ten foot space in between there and a ten foot access alley and ways in which he could swing each one of those gates 180 degrees. And so this was producer ended up really liking this design. We drew up another one, like it's because that was like we told him you know, this is going to be a, a fairly significant investment uh, for when you're working cattle. But he said you know I want I want just a couple options. So we drew up another one where he had four pens in this. Uh, same area and he ended up going with the, the six pin option and actually making it out of pipe so you know we drew up gave him all these designs and he went up with pipe so you know I think he, he was definitely of the mindset I just want to be done with this uh, so another example went to Trimble County and it's a different facility he had a space uh, wide enough for between two barns where he potentially wanted his working facility load out area and and a shoot so you know, we did the calculations that we would have 20 square foot per animal. And it's, it's also, you know, really try to evaluate how the animals are going to flow into the system potentially. Um, so we, we came up with a couple different options and we try to go from, when we're working these animals, progressively smaller areas. So it makes it a little bit easier to manage them. So 
Um, when we're looking at this, we push them all into this larger pen and then potentially, you know, sort off whatever desired animals there may be. So you might not be able to get everything he wants, but some of them as well. So progressively going smaller. Um, and then once he did this, we're able to show that he can close some of his gates. So within uh, this inventor, it's AutoCAD inventor program, you know, we can manipulate the gates, show them hanging different ways. Uh, so it really gives us a lot of dynamic capabilities as far as designing facilities and saying, okay, this is your gate swing. This will be what you could expect as far as it being in the way over here or over here. Um, and so we show that, you know, he's worked his animals, he's closed his gates. Um, and then he comes down here and is able to, so we, we've gone from our one area, our smaller area to working within a smaller facility. So we got him to our access alley and trying just to show for how you progressively work the animals through a facility and it gets them into the tub. Another option is, you know, we, another gate could also be used to move animals from the holding pen to the tub. We, and the reason we have, why don't we have this gate swinging the other way? Because then it'd be easier to run them directly into the tub potentially. Well, we want it to be potentially uh, have the option of being able to, if we ran some animals in here, could we recapture or remove them before they get to the holding tub? So if we wanted to sort off some additional animals, we'd have to be, the capability to sort them off before they got to the tub. So if we ran them in the, the other, the first gate, if we ran them in this way, we'd have that ability to run them back into their uh, original holding pen area. So we're just, this is some of the uh, just, you know, options which we try to get or think about as we design this facility. Um, then, then you pretty much, you just have to work them through your tub and you have the capability with this system to either run them directly out uh, so you can return them to your field after you're done working them, or you have the capability to potentially recapture these animals and run them back into the a that access alley and run them back into the chute or run them back into the holding area. So it gives you a couple of dynamic capabilities as well. And, and we think about it, if we wanted to, if we knew this producer in Trimble County wanted to run, if he knew he had a couple animals, he, had them, he could run them directly into his facility if he really wanted to as well. So he, he had a couple, a lot of different options of how he could work these animals. Um, if you needed to, it's only catching a couple that main alley could be used to simplify the process. So, uh, you know, we like for producers and if you, we can add more gates, it's going to add a little more cost, but always adds, it gives you some dynamic capabilities. And so this is a facility they had between two barns. And so we look at loadout. So with loadout, we just had it, um, pretty much be per, uh, parallel to his, uh, to his tub system. And so we have a couple push gates within that. To help you push the animals so they run down that main access alley you bring your animals up push them down that main access alley you close your first gate close your second gate and push them onto your trailer so that that seemed to be you know the producer i think it seemed to be i think impressed by this system of you know trying to use everything to the fullest extent so we're not building a whole nother system to it we're trying to use what we have available to help push these animals um, another, another good option that, uh, you know, you can't, couldn't really see, but you can get down in the details is having a small access gate. So we were there, we had a, a two foot access gate to help him push these animals or not to help him go back and forth between pushing these animals and uh, going ahead and performing the vaccination, whatever needs to be done with them. So that's another, another important little consideration. Um, so alternatively, you know, we're bringing these animals up. We can have, you know, all the gates open or some of the gates open. Um, we can run them up in this pen. So it gives them, you know, some options. But, you know, something else we could have added as well, and I have a circle there is um, we added two gates. Could be added to the interior of a large pen to help you move and hold the animal. So as he's working these animals and get to a smaller, smaller group, we could potentially add two gates to help him push the animals into a smaller area and make it potentially a little easier for him to work so he doesn't have to walk back and forth um, to really push and drive these animals. Because it's going to be, for this system, he wanted to work where he could just work these animals by himself. And so this was just one of the options that we came up with. You know, this is one of the variants we came up with. Uh, a third example was a producer who really, really wanted to use guardrail. I mean, he had to use guardrail. So we came up with a a number of options for him as well. Um, and this, this has a barn, but that's gonna be, the, we're gonna go more detail into the barn systems uh, a little bit next time or uh, next presentation, I think on March, in March. Um, so he can move half his herd in. So he could, was able to have about, he had about 50, 60 head. And we have, you know, for this produce, we also gave him the dimensions, but I'm just showing it for uh, 
simplistic reasons. Um, you know, we're able to move the cattle down this, half them down here, load them into the first pin. Then we we're able to push them in and load them in either one or two ways, either at the far end or the close end. You push that second set of animals within to that pin and then work them. You can sort between the pins. You know, we have, we could add, we have one gate shown here. We could add multiple gates to help them sort between the pins, um, sort his animals between the pins. And then he can work his cattle. He had his working facility within his barn. He can work them, runs them out, works them. And he can do the same thing with his first set of cattle. So he, this is the type of facility that this producer wanted. But we're also limited or constrained in this case by the, uh, the total width of the land that he had available. So he had where this barn was, he had about 50, 50 foot on both sides of that barn of where he could work animals. And that was pretty much it. And so usually when we're getting to with producers, always we're trying to make some site specific recommendations or site specific designs for them, which will work for their system, work to their environment that they're in. And so then he also had some gates, you know, up against the barn there to help push the cattle into the barn. And then, he, you know, he ran them out through the barn. He, uh, lock his, he could lock his cattle in the barn or work and run them into a larger lot and run them through the chute. So he had a couple different options here. Um, he could still recapture the animals. So that was still an option. He could recapture them into uh, two pens and run them back into his, their individual pens. Or he had another option where he could run them back and run them back through and work them again. So he had a lot of different options. I think that's what we're trying to get is uh, just allow producers more dynamic capabilities when they're working their cattle. Um, and that was just another way to send the animals in through pin one. So he's got a, a lot of different options of moving his cattle into his uh, barn and working facility. And, and you know, he can, and this was for his loadout system for loading out from the first pin. You know, we pretty much just move them directly down an alley, um, close our first gate to help push these animals, push them through the first gate, push them with the second gate, and use that to help push them onto the trailer. Uh, kind of progressively use those. Uh, gates to help push the animals onto whatever cattle. He just had a simple cattle trailer he was loading them on. I think it was a 24 foot cattle trailer. So, you know, and this, when we get producers' recommendation, we're not saying this is written stone, this is what you have to do. We're just saying, you know, for what we think, this would be a good option for you. Here's it drawn out. Here's how we see animals potentially flowing through this system. And then, you know, let them make their own, you know, let them do as they will. And so um, I'm talking about, so that's when we, went out and performed actual farm visits uh, to make some of these designs and recommendations. Uh, so if we're doing, we can also do it without a farm visit. So when I went down to with, visit Whitney, and so, or, well, she sent me this at some point of what she had from one of her producers. So she sent, you know, description, some pictures, hand, draw, hand drawings and dimensions there. And she kind of has it described there to the right. And it's like, well, we got a hay barn. Now we want to get as close as we can to that hay barn. We want to put a lean-to beside it. To help work, you know, give provide some shade from a working cow, but also protect some of the animals. Um, <clears throat> number of head. So for you know, provides the number of head. A lot of times we'll ask producers, well, how many head do you have? I have 30. And well, before we go designing things, like, are you planning any expansions in the future? Well, yeah, I want to get up to 50. It's like, well, well, that changes things. Before we put a, you know, start planting some posts in the ground and doing a lot of work, we need to really know. Are you planning excuse, you know, any future expansions? Is that a possibility? Because we kind of need to plan for that when we're, we're designing for our square footage per animal. And then um, you know, the design criteria is, well, you know, what do they really want? What do they have? And how can we work, really work with their system? And so, um, so Whitney gave me this. Sent me, sent, me a, sent me a picture as well. And then we, we tried to come up with a, a couple of different, a cup, well, came up with this drawing for her. As far as, you know, she had, well, I want a bud box potentially or a couple of different options. We, we came up with, well, if you got it, she had a, they had a tub. Uh, they needed enough area to work, I think maybe 20 to 50 animals or hold 20 to 50 animals. So we got a larger pin here. You know, we could potentially add more gates or, but I think it gives, it provides you with how these animals potentially work into the system. So we have our, you know, our lean to structure onto our barn. And then we really, you know, how we move the animals in, how are we pushing them out and, you know, working a couple at a time and then, you know, you really push them through, through the system and then having the option potentially to either uh, turn these animals out or potentially recapture them. 
So you know, they can be sent out to pasture. If they go to the right, the animals turn left, they can get caught back within one of the pens and held for some other uh, vaccination or treatment if they got a hurt foot, pink eye, whatever it may be. Um, so, you know, two pens, I think, okay, it was two pens that could hold about 24 animals and a main alley. So, you know, we came with this the system, you know, the design criteria uh, was that, you know, she wanted some of the animals to be able to get sh some shade, but also have the main part of the shade be over the working facility. So, you know, we tried to assume for that, you know, our, our, and account for our potential roof pitch and just give them an overall, you know, this is what we would recommend, or this is, you know, one option. They don't like it. They can come back to us and say, well, what if you change this or this? And so we can't, we can change options. So for the one where we had the, um, the guardrail, we probably went through six or six iterations at least of that facility. Um, you know, the main major restriction with that last one I showed was that, um, <clears throat> The design of the alley length, so the alley length wasn't the suggested 20 foot long. So fewer animals could be queued up, which is why I said only put maybe five or six animals or three animals within that tub. And so trying to trying to really optimize the system, but you know, taking into account that you know that was a space we had, so we couldn't have our total 20 foot long alley length going to our chute. So that that's how it is sometimes. Um, we're trying to create a couple other. So what we can do as well as like, you know, a couple other drawings or this one's done, like the barn down there is from Marion County. I think it's, you know, water, they have the dimensions for this water online so we can draw these and throw them in, into our fields and we're doing 3D analysis. We, you know, we're trying to really plan for these facilities. We're trying to get more and more detailed or accurate analysis. So it's just a, a level of detail that the producer may want. It's like we can throw up a block and say the water is here or we can draw the water you know, we, we can do a lot. We have a capability to do a lot. And once we draw it the first time, it's really easy to place and move within a, within a drawing. So as we get further and further along, we'll have more and more options for our drawings. And we can create, you know, we can have dimensions. So this is for the, the double alley, a wooden double alley. So showing like, this is an option. A producer wanted like, well, wanted an option for how would this be done? It's like, well, here's our drawing. This is what you need for your specifications. Um, we can add, you know, any level of detail that they want to it. Uh, and eventually, you know, trying to get to a point where we can, you can do this somewhat. It takes a little bit more work is uh, just really get a whole 3D. We can talk about, you know, I talked about initially at the beginning of the slides, you know, this whole farmstead planning. So we can do a whole lot with, you know, importing some 3D images or getting that elevation down, throwing our facility on there and seeing, uh, integrating that to within a GIS program and really being able to visualize a lot of different aspects of the farm. And so that, that's just something we want to get out there. So we had, we can draw, we can go do a farm visits, um, uh, visit farms. I guess what, what we need from a the extension personnel be if you have a producer who has a really good, you know, facility or design and they want to potentially share that or you don't necessarily need their name or if they want to give their name, that's fine. Um, but what we would need is if we go to this facility, we can do a lot of drawings or draw and say, this is what works for this producer. Or, this is what works for a producer within Kentucky. And so if you have, if you know of a farmer or know of uh, an individual who has a really good facility, you know, and it's, and it's a little different or if it's a little unique, you know, that's something we potentially want to come out there, visit, maybe watch some animals work through or, and definitely want to draw it up. So we just provide, um, I want to at some point get, we've done probably, uh, 20 or so different drawings for a producer. So we want to get all those online to say, okay, here's a resource of different drawings you made. Because right now the only options they have is really from uh, Louisiana State University has a couple different, or we have some really, really old options that aren't um, readily usable, I think, for a lot of producers in the state. So I think well, something we want to do is create a lot of these different CAD type drawings, then just create a little database for them within livestock systems between myself and Morgan just to show these are some options some producers have used. You don't have to use them, but these are options. So it gives them a better idea of how to design or lay out their facility. Um, with that, I guess I'd open up for any questions. I kind of went a little faster than I thought I would today, but we had a fair number of slides and we just trying to show, um, you know, what we can do as far as far as far as far as just do a basic layout. Um, you know, we have we have a lot of capabilities. 
to help producers. So that's what we're just trying to get across is, you know, we can make, we can make drawings, you know, from before they build and it'll, it'll take a little bit. So I have, you know, most of the time it took about a month or so. And I think I'm still, I'm probably about a year behind on getting one to Heather and one of the, in Wolf County, I believe. So, it, you know, it, it takes a while and, you know, everybody, you know, if you say it's an emergency, we'll try to get it to, as soon as we can. It's like, oh, this producer getting ready to build, getting ready to do something. Like, we'll try to draw it as fast as we can, you know, take into account we got classes and grants and everything else. And, that life entails. So, you know, we'll try to get it as fast as we can, but, you know, just give us a little bit of time. So it's like tomorrow, you know, we, I produce, when do you want it? And they always say tomorrow. It's like, well, we'll do the best we can. <laughs> so are, are there any questions for anybody? Are there any thoughts or comments? Um, let's see. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. So, you know, and if, uh, I guess there's been a couple producers we've actually gone to do to this. And so if we know producers who do these, we can maybe, I know Michelle, we can do probably a field day, you know, at some point if they do uh, put in the system, we can talk about, you know, what we designed for, you know, if there's something that goes wrong, you know, just tell us like, Oh, it's one of those idiot engineers. Cause I always think of it this way is, you know, anybody can build a bridge, it takes an engineer to build a bridge that can barely stand. So, um, let's see. So unless you guys have any questions or any thoughts, I guess we're pretty much done here. Uh, so like I said, if you want to, you know, let us know. And, and actually if we're visiting a county, if you get two or three producers together for doing a farm visit, that, that really helps us out because then we can visit a couple farms and then, uh, it helps us, you know, we can just do all our drawings at once. So it really helps us streamline a lot of processes. So if you can get like, a couple producers within a county, we do a farm visit and we go and look at a couple farms. It makes our, our lives a whole lot easier when we're doing drawings. We just sit down, take a day and just make some drawings. So, well, I want to thank everybody. I want to thank everybody for attending today. And like I said, we'll have another one of these in March. We'll really focus on more of just tobacco farm facilities or facilities within tobacco farms. So thank you for your time. I appreciate you attending our webinar. Thank you.